In this video, we're going to go over 120 of the most common defensive shots in 8-ball, 9-ball, and 10-ball. These are shots every player has to know to reach a high level in pool. And this video is jam-packed and will absolutely supercharge your defensive game. And we're also going to go through over 20 principles of defense that will make understanding game situations much easier. And I'll even show you defensive strategies in 8-ball when it doesn't look like there's any chance of winning. As you go through this video, I'm first going to show you the layout, then pause the video and try to find a good defensive shot. Then see if your solution matches mine. And we also have an ebook that covers every shot featured in this video. This ebook is available on our website and even has a time code so you can find the corresponding shot in the video. So if you're ready, let's get started. So here is the first defensive situation. As we go through each layout, you can pause the video to see if you can find the best defensive shot. Then play the video and see if your solution is similar to mine. If you come across a defensive shot that you aren't familiar with, set it up on a table and practice it a few times until you get the hang of it. It's important that you increase your defensive skills in order to reach a higher level in pull. In this game of 10 ball, we're left with this shot on the seven ball. And this leads us to our first principle of defense. Be ultra cautious about playing a safety behind only one ball. For instance, we wouldn't play the shot this way because if the cue ball doesn't land behind the eight ball, we're giving our opponent an offensive shot. Playing a safe behind only one ball requires excellent speed control. The exception to this is when you're leaving the opponent a tough offensive shot. For example, in this layout, I'll try to hide the cue ball behind the 10 ball but my main priority is to make sure the eight ball ends up near the other end round, which leaves my opponent a tough shot in case I don't hide the cue ball. So back to our original layout. In this situation, we're going to put distance between the cue ball and seven ball by sending the seven ball to the end round. Ideally, we would like to use the eight ball and 10 ball as blocker balls. So when playing a safety behind only one ball, try to leave a tough offensive shot for your opponent in case you don't hide the cue ball. In this layout, we could play the bank shot in the corner pocket, but we not only have to bank the eight ball, but we also have to play shape for the nine ball. Let's examine the defensive shots that we have available. This option is pretty good if you're comfortable with this type of shot. These shots do take practice since it's easy to strike too much or too little of the eight ball and leave an offensive shot. The other option is to leave the eight ball near the side rail and send the cue ball three or four rails to the other half of the table. Most strong players wouldn't try this shot since you'll leave a fairly easy shot if you don't hide the eight ball. A good defensive shot here would be sending the eight ball two rails to the end rail and leaving the cue ball near the nine ball. If we don't hide the cue ball behind the nine ball, we still may snooker our opponent because of the 10 ball. The goal when playing this shot is to leave the cue ball as close as possible to the nine ball. Now if the 10 ball were here, this shot may not be the best choice since if we don't hide the cue ball, our opponent will have a nice offensive shot on the eight ball. Now this might be the better option where we send both balls to opposite side rails. The ideal shot would be to hide the cue ball behind the nine ball, but if we don't, we're still leaving a tough shot. In this layout, we could thin the seven ball and hide the cue ball behind the 10 ball but misjudging the speed even a little bit will give my opponent a nice shot. Instead, I'll send the seven ball to the other side rail and leave the cue ball near the end rail. If the nine ball were here, now it's blocking the corner pocket. So it's safe to try to hide the cue ball behind just one ball. In this layout, we could try to pocket the seven ball in the corner pocket, but if you're not confident in your ability to pocket this ball, then you need to find a good defensive shot. In this layout, it may be difficult to hide the cue ball or seven ball, so in this circumstance, we would put distance between both balls. And this leads to another principle of defense. Try to put distance between the cue ball and object ball. By doing this, it makes it harder for your opponent to play an effective safety. So on this shot, I'm going to shoot the seven ball and leave both balls by the end rails.
In this layout, if we're not confident in the bank shot, then just like the last layout, we're going to bank the 7 to the other side rail and send the cue ball toward the 9 ball. When shooting shots like this, really focus on the speed of the object ball. In this layout, we have two good defensive options. The first option is to bank the 7 ball toward the end rail. If it ends up behind the 10 ball, that would be ideal. But even if we don't hide the 7 ball, we still leave a tough shot for our opponent. In this option, we'll be putting the cue ball behind the 10 ball. The difference in the two shots is that if we don't hide the cue ball, we may leave an offensive shot for our opponent. In this layout, we have a nice safe area over here. We could play this type of safety, but it requires a thin hit on the 7 ball, which means the 7 ball may end up close to the corner pocket. So misjudging the safety will leave an easy shot. A safer option is to send the cue ball 4 rails to our safe area. This allows us to strike more of the 7 ball, moving it away from the corner pocket. And this leads to another principle of defense. If possible, try to avoid leaving the object ball near a pocket. This makes it easier for your opponent to pocket the ball by kicking or jumping. Another option is to bank the 7 ball to the end rail. These types of shots take a lot of practice since you really have to control the speed of the object ball. Sometimes the best defensive shot is the one that has a high percentage of success, even if it means we don't lock up our opponent. For instance, in this layout, if we softly strike the 7 ball, the cue ball will head to the end rail, leaving a tough shot. A bonus would be that the 9 ball comes off the cushion and lands between both balls. In this situation, we have a tricky shot on the 7 ball. A common shot that comes up in layouts like this is to bank the object ball 5 rails to the other half of the table while putting the cue ball near the end rail. This defensive shot is easier than you think once you get the hang of it. The great thing about this shot is that the cue ball naturally heads to the end rail with a little top spin. Here's a simple safety that comes up quite often and is fairly simple to execute. We'll be striking above center and really focusing on landing the cue ball between the cushion and eight ball. In this situation, the goal is to strike the seven ball banking it around the eight ball. This shot takes focus since striking the seven ball too thin or too thick could result in leaving the opponent a shot. But if you take your time, it's a defensive shot that is very repeatable. In this layout, we can try pocketing the seven ball, but shaping the eight ball is extremely difficult. So in this shot, we're going to send the seven ball to the end rail and send the cue ball to the opposite end rail, leaving a tough shot. Ideally, we would like to use the 9 or 10 ball as blocker balls to hide our opponent. Here's a similar defensive shot. In this shot, we're going to bank the 7 ball off the side rail and try to leave the cue ball on the end rail near the 8 ball. Here's a nice safety that's very repeatable once you get the hang of it. The goal in this shot is to bank the 7 ball to the left end rail and send the cue ball around the 9 and 10 ball. Make sure when you try the shot that you are striking the cue ball with maximum high.
In this safety, similar to a previous safety, we're going to be banking the seven ball to the other side rail and at the same time trying to put the cue ball near the eight ball, forcing a kick shot. A common defensive shot that comes up quite often is the half ball hit. On shots like this, you can strike half of the object ball, which will send both balls to opposite side rails. This is a high percentage defensive shot that is easy to execute and leaves the opponent a tough shot. And if there are any balls by the rails, you can use them as blocker balls. The benefit of defensive shots like this is that even if you don't have perfect speed control, you're probably still going to leave your opponent a difficult shot. The second option is to send the cue ball three rails landing near the 10 ball. When performing this shot, make sure you don't overuse the right spin, which shortens the angle off the top side rail, sending the cue ball toward the bottom side rail instead of the end rail. In this layout, we have a nice safe area over here if we can bank the six ball to the left end rail. So in this shot, we're gonna bank the six ball, sending the cue ball around the 10 ball. By doing this, we should leave our opponent a difficult shot. A bonus would be snuggling them behind the eight or 10 ball. Here's a nice shot that has a lot of room for error. In this shot, we're going to send the 6 ball to the side rail and send the cue ball to the end rail. The 7, 8, and 9 ball make for nice blocker balls. When playing defense, look for balls that are near each other. They can make for a nice blocker wall to put between the cue ball and object ball. In this layout, we could go all out for the bank shot, and if you're good at banks, this is an excellent option. If you don't trust your bank shot, then you can go for a defensive option, where you'll be slicing the eight ball and sending the cue ball four rails to the right end rail. In this shot, we have a nice safe area here. So the goal is to bank the six ball into this area while leaving the cue ball near the left end rail. Since we don't want the cue ball traveling too far and leaving a shot, we're gonna be using a touch of right spin to help slow the cue ball's progress. In this shot, if we just send the six ball to the bottom side rail, we should leave our opponent a tough shot, since the seven ball blocks the bank shot for the side pocket. In this layout, if we can send the six ball to the end rail, we can use the seven, nine, and 10 ball as a blocker wall to hide the cue ball. On this shot, it's easy to under hit the shot and not have the six ball reach the cushion so take your time and make sure you have your speed locked in before shooting. This is a common defensive shot and similar to a few of the shots we've seen before. We're going to bank the six ball to the other end rail and leave the cue ball near the first diamond of the side rail, using the seven and eight as blockers. We'll be using left spin on the cue ball to help kill the cue ball speed. Here's another example where we have balls near the rack area that we can use to hide the cue ball. A good option here is to send the cue ball four rails landing behind the group of balls in the rack area.
the 9-ball acts as a blocker for the corner pocket. In this shot, the goal is to bank the 5-ball away from the bottom left corner pocket and land the cue ball in our safe area up here. When playing shots like this, you should assume that you may not snooker your opponent. So really focus on making sure the five ball is away from the corner pocket. Here's a similar layout, except this time the seven ball is away from the side rail. When there's a ball about a ball away from the cushion, it makes for a great hiding spot for the cue ball. It's like hiding the cue ball behind two blocker balls. This gives us the option of sending the 5 ball to the end rail and putting the cue ball behind the 7 ball. In this layout, we could try to pocket the 5 ball into the corner pocket. And if you're confident in this shot, it may be worth the risk. If you're not confident in the shot, then we have a nice 2 rail bank shot on the 5 ball while sending the cue ball to the end rail behind the 10 and 7 ball. We'll be using a touch of left spin to help slow the cue ball's speed. In this layout, we have two defensive options. The first option is to strike the 5 ball thin and send the cue ball to the end rail. On this shot, your opponent may see a piece of the 5 ball, but they won't have much of a shot. Another option, and one that takes practice, is to strike the side rail across from the 5 ball with running English, which in this case is right spin. When the cue ball strikes the cushion with the right spin, it widens the angle, sending the cue ball toward the 7 ball. The key is developing a feel for where you need to aim on the cushion. In this layout, we have a nice safety where we'll be sending the 5 ball to the end rail and using the 8 ball as a blocker ball. In situations like this, it's safe to hide the cue ball behind a single ball since we won't be leaving a good offensive shot if we don't hide the cue ball. In this shot, we have a nice angle in the 6 ball that allows us to send the cue ball off both side rails and toward the end rail. The added benefit of this shot is that the 9 ball will be blocking the corner pocket. The goal in this shot is to leave the cue ball behind the 8 ball, but even if we don't, we still leave a difficult shot. This is another circumstance where a single ball safety is a good option. At this angle, the cue ball will float naturally to the other side of the 8 ball. We can use a little left spin to send the cue ball closer to the 8 ball. In this layout, we have three good options. The first option involves sending the cue ball two rails toward the 8 ball. Since we're striking the 6 ball thin, it may end up near the corner pocket. But fortunately, we have a wall of three balls to hide behind. The second option is to send the cue ball toward the left end rail. A touch of right spin will help slow the cue ball's progress. A bonus would be to hide the cue ball behind the 7 ball. The third option is the simplest. In this option, we're going to be sending the 6 ball to the side rail using the 9 ball as a blocker ball. In this layout, we have a nice wall of 3 balls that we can hide the cue ball behind. So in this shot, we're going to be banking the 6 ball to the side rail and at the same time, sending the cue ball toward the end rail.
In this layout, we have two good options for a defensive shot. The first option is to send the fly ball to the in rail and follow the cue ball toward the nine ball. When shooting the shot, it's important we don't leave the fly ball too close to the corner pocket. The other option is to send the fly ball to the in rail and bank the cue ball off the side rail and into our safe area. This is a good option since the fly ball doesn't end up near a pocket. Here's a nice defensive shot in that there's a good chance you should be able to hide the cue ball. The goal in this shot is to bank the fly ball between both side rails and send the cue ball to the right end rail. This shot is all about developing a feel for how much left spin you're going to need. In this layout, we could play this defensive shot where we're sending the cue ball to the side rail and sending the fly ball to the end rail. But if it isn't struck perfectly, we could leave a fairly easy shot for our opponent. Instead, we're gonna use high action and bank the fly ball two rails to the middle of the table and send the cue ball behind the seven ball. The key to this shot is really locking in on the angle you're going to need to properly send the cue ball off the end rail. In this shot, we have a nice defensive shot. We're gonna be shooting the fly ball toward the bottom side rail and sending the cue ball two rails to the top side rail using the eight ball as a blocker ball. This is a nice option in that if you don't hide the cue ball, your opponent still has a tough shot. On this shot, we're gonna be banking the five ball three rails toward the right end rail. And at the same time, we're gonna be sending the cue ball toward the nine ball. This is a great shot since we're putting a great deal of distance between both balls. Here's another defensive shot where we're gonna be putting distance between both balls. On this shot, we're gonna be banking the five ball around the six ball area and sending the cue ball toward the end rail near the eight ball. Ideally, we would like the cue ball to end up behind the eight ball, but if it doesn't, we may still leave a tough shot. On this shot, we have a nice safe area over here. The six, eight, and nine ball create a nice wall, which gives us room for error when playing this shot. This is a common type of safety where we're sending both balls to opposite end rails. When performing defensive shots like this, always look for blocker balls that you can hide the cue ball behind. In this case, a nine ball would make a great blocker ball. This safety is fairly simple to pull off once you practice it. In this shot, we're gonna bank the nine ball to the end rail and send the cue ball to the side rail. The goal is to use the 10 ball as a blocker ball. If we don't completely hide the cue ball, we're still leaving a difficult shot. In this shot, we can go all out for the bank shot or we can play a defensive shot and let our opponent try a high risk offensive shot. In this shot, we're gonna be banking the nine ball four rails to the right end rail. The cue ball will be naturally sent toward the 10 ball.
On this shot, we're going to be banking the eight ball two rails toward the left end rail. This shot is all about controlling the speed of the eight ball. On this shot, we can try cutting the five ball in the corner pocket and going around the table for shape on the six ball. But this shot is extremely difficult to pull off. Instead, we're going to bank the five ball off the side rail and send the cue ball to the opposite end rail. A bonus would be to hide the cue ball using the seven or eight ball. On this shot, we have two good defensive options. The first option takes a bit more skill in that we really need to control our speed since we'll be using a stun shot. On this shot, we're going to bank the five ball off the side rail and send the cue ball behind the eight ball. The second option is to softly roll the five ball to the side rail and land the cue ball on the other side of the 10 and 7 ball. This option is a little easier to control the speed and is very repeatable. On this shot, one option is to shoot the 5 ball toward the side rail and float the cue ball behind the 9 ball. If you're comfortable with the speed of the table, this is a good option. If you're not comfortable trying to land the cue ball behind the 9 ball, then another option is to bank the 5 ball toward the end rail and use the 7 and 9 as blockers. In this shot, I could try to bank the 4 ball and place a cue ball behind the 6 ball. This shot is a bit risky since our speed control would have to be very good, otherwise we're going to leave our opponent a shot. Instead, we'll strike the 4 ball thin with right spin and send the cue ball 4 rails to the left end rail. This shot puts distance between both balls, plus there is a good chance we may be able to hide the cue ball behind the 7 ball. On this shot, we have a nice safe area over here if we can leave the four ball along the side rail. So we'll shoot the four ball thin with right spin, sending the cue ball to the top side rail on the other side of the side pocket. In this layout, we're going to bank the 7 ball toward the 8 ball using right spin on the cue ball. This will send the cue ball to the end rail near the 9 ball. The goal is to use the 8 or 10 ball as blockers, while at the same time putting distance between both balls. It's important that you're able to recognize when you are faced with a natural safety. In this layout, if we bank the seven ball to the right end rail, the cue ball will naturally float to the side rail and toward the end rail. The ideal shot would be to hide the cue ball behind the eight ball. In situations like this, it's very difficult to hide the cue ball from the 7. When there are very few balls left on the table, it's very difficult to hide the cue ball from the object ball. When there are very few balls left on the table, the best strategy is to pick a defensive shot that leaves distance and at the same time may end up hiding the cue ball. But your first priority is to leave distance between both balls.
In this situation, you can go all out for the offensive shot, pocketing the eight ball in the corner pocket. Or you can play a defensive shot by sending the eight ball to the end rail. This shot requires practice since you really need to control the speed of the eight ball. At this angle, the cue ball will float behind the nine ball. Here's a similar situation. If we don't feel confident in the cut shot, we can bank the eight ball to the other end rail and try to land the cue ball behind the nine ball. A touch of left spin will help kill the cue ball's speed when it strikes the side rail. In situations like this, it's safe to try to hide the cue ball behind only one ball, since the object ball ends up at the other end of the table. In this layout, the goal is to bank the three ball two rails toward the other end rail, and at the same time, leave the cue ball by the right end rail. If you have a ball near the end rail, like the eight ball, you can attempt to put the cue ball behind it, which would be a bonus. Here's a nice safety that is easy to repeat over and over again. In this shot, we're going to send the 8-ball to the end rail and land the cue ball near the side rail. If struck correctly, you should be able to snooker your opponent. Here's a nice safety that takes a bit of practice, but once you have it down, it will help you win a lot of games. In this situation, we could try a low percentage cut shot, and if you're confident in this shot, then it's worth the risk. If you don't want to try the shot, then try the defensive shot where you'll be banking the eight ball two rails to the middle of the table, and at the same time, you'll be sending the cue ball toward the side rail by the nine ball. This shot not only leaves distance between both balls, but there is the added bonus of a possible snooker. In this layout, we're going to play a defensive shot by banking the three ball to the other half of the table. And this leads to another principle of defense. While it may not always be possible, try to leave the object ball away from a cushion. Since I left the three ball near a cushion, the opponent has several options as far as hitting the three ball. Even if they go two rails and come up short, the cushion will act as a backboard, sending the cue ball toward the three ball. By leaving the three ball near a cushion, it now becomes a much bigger ball, which means it's much easier to hit. If we shoot this shot again, now we're gonna add more speed to the shot, which will send the three ball farther away from the cushion. Now it becomes much more difficult to strike the three ball. In this layout, we could try this safety where we leave the cue ball on the other side of the nine ball. But as we just learned, since the three ball will be near a cushion, the opponent will have several ways to strike it. A better option is to play the shot this way where we try to land in this area. So even though we left the three ball by the cushion, we're going to try to leave the cue ball in this area, which means he can no longer use the bottom side rail to kick at the three ball. And this leads to another principle of defense. Try to limit kicking options for your opponent by taking away one or more rails when playing defense. In this situation, we're going to play a defensive shot by sending the three ball around the four ball. If we play the three ball this way, my opponent can use the bottom side rail when they kick at the three ball. If we can cut off this bottom side rail, our opponent would have a much tougher time hitting the three ball. And when I shoot this shot, my goal is to get the cue ball as close as possible to the four ball, which takes away the bottom side rail. In this layout, we're on the five ball, but we don't have a good offensive shot. A good option here is to strike the left half of the five ball and send both balls to each side rail. This is a good option in that if you don't hide the cue ball, you're not leaving an easy shot. In this scenario, we're once again going to put distance between the cue ball and object ball. When we shoot the six ball, we're going to send the cue ball to the end rail using high action. If we strike this shot at the proper speed, the six ball should end up near the other end rail.
Ideally, we would like the cue ball to end up behind the seven ball. In this layout, we have three options. We can try the bank shot in the corner pocket, but even if we make this shot, we probably won't end up with position on the seven ball. The second option is to play a half ball hit, sending the six ball to the bottom side rail, leaving your opponent a tough bank shot. And the third option is this shot where we're gonna send the cue ball three rails toward the nine and eight ball. Although by playing the shot this way, you may be giving up an offensive shot. It's going to be extremely difficult for your opponent to both pocket the six and play shape in the seven ball from this distance. And there's a chance the cue ball could end up on top of a ball or even behind the nine ball. When playing nine ball or 10 ball, you'll notice that there are usually two or three balls near the rack area. Learning how to send the cue ball behind these balls from anywhere on the table will help you win many games. So in this shot, we're gonna be using plenty of right spin to send the cue ball four rails behind the six and seven ball. When shooting this shot, focus on striking the object ball fairly thin. In this layout, we could try to pocket the five ball in the corner pocket, but it's a difficult shot, and even if we made it, we still may not have position on the six ball. And this leads to another principle of defense. If you're not guaranteed to have position on your next ball after attempting a low percentage offensive shot, then think about performing a defensive shot. So even if I made the five ball, I'm not guaranteed a shot on the six ball. Instead, we can cut the five ball toward the side rail and send the cue ball to the other side rail. A bonus would be to use the seven ball as a blocker ball. This is a very effective safety because even if we let our opponent see the five ball, the bank shot is blocked by the eight ball. This shot is similar to a previous safety where we're gonna be striking the cushion across from the five ball with running English, which in this case is left spin. Once the cue ball strikes the five ball, it caroms toward the cushion and the left spin sends it toward the eight ball. In this layout, we have an offensive shot on the six ball, but getting shape on the seven ball isn't guaranteed. But the nine ball is close to the six ball, which means if we can shoot the six ball into the seven, we can slide the cue ball over a few inches, landing behind the nine ball. And this leads to another principle of defense that comes up quite often. It's sometimes good strategy to shoot the ball into another object ball, which allows more freedom when controlling the cue ball. For instance, in this layout, the six ball won't go past the seven into the corner pocket. But if we carry the six off the seven, the six ball will head to the other side rail. Knowing this, we can draw the cue ball off the rail, sending it behind the eight ball. Here's another example where you can shoot a ball into another ball, which gives you more control over the cue ball. In this layout, similar to a previous layout, we're going to carry the six ball off the seven, sending it to the middle of the table. Now we can use draw with a touch of right spin to send the cue ball behind the eight ball. Now we're going to go through some eight ball defensive shots. In this game, we could try to pocket the six ball, but it's a difficult shot and we're not guaranteed a shot afterward. A nice defensive shot here would be to play a stop shot while shooting the six ball into the end rail. Here's a shot that comes up quite often in eight ball. It's a rather simple shot, but still requires practice to develop a feel for how much of the object ball you need to strike. In this shot, we're gonna be softly banking the one ball a few inches off the side rail and using it as a blocker to hide the cue ball.
This shot is all about recognizing where the safe area is on the table. And when we talk about safe areas, we're talking about areas on the table where even if our opponent can see one of their balls, they won't have a good offensive shot. For instance, in this layout, if I can leave the cue ball in this area, my opponent will be left with a very low percentage offensive shot. In this layout, a nice safe area would be over here, since even if I don't hide the cue ball behind the two ball, my opponent would still have a tough shot on the stripes. This is one of the defensive principles that comes up quite often when playing eight ball. Once your opponent has fewer balls on the table, you'll start to notice more and more safe areas where you can leave the cue ball. So back to the original layout. In this situation, we have a safe area over here where even if our opponent can see the nine or 13 ball, they still won't have a good offensive shot. In this shot, we don't have any good offensive shots and it doesn't look like we can play a lockup safety anywhere. In this situation, we're gonna simply play a stop shot. The goal is to leave the six ball on the right half of the table, making it difficult for my opponent to leave me a tough shot. Sometimes just leaving the cue ball close to one of the opponent's balls like this can be an extremely effective defensive shot. In this shot, our opponent has the advantage since they have more balls on the table. So when we play a defensive shot, we need to tie up one of their balls. On this shot, we're gonna be playing the combo, sending the five ball to the side rail on the other side of the side pocket. At the same time, we're gonna be leaving our opponent safe. In this game, we have a nice safe area over on this side of the table. So we're gonna shoot the nine ball with high action, banking it around the eight ball and sending the cue ball off the end rail into our safe area. Ideally, we would like to send the cue ball off the end rail and behind the eight ball. In this layout, if we can pocket the seven ball, we have a safe area over here. So we're gonna play the combo, striking the 12 ball thin, sending the cue ball back toward the bottom side rail. It's always a good idea to look for offensive shots that will also leave your opponent safe. For instance, in this layout, we can pocket the seven ball into the bottom right corner pocket and send the cue ball to our safe area behind the three and one ball. Look for shots like this when playing eight ball. These types of shots give you an opportunity to continue your run out, or if you miss the shot, leave your opponent safe. In this layout, the normal position shot is to pocket the five ball and send the cue ball to this area on the side rail. If you're worried about missing the five ball, then a safer option is to pocket the five and send the cue ball to the side rail on this side of the three ball. Now, if you miss the five ball, you won't leave an offensive shot for your opponent. On this shot, we're gonna be pocketing the three ball and sending the cue ball off the side rail near the side pocket for shape on the seven ball. If you're not confident in your ability to execute this shot, then you can use follow and take a longer shot on the seven ball. Now, if you miss the three ball, your opponent won't have a good offensive shot. In this layout, we have a safe area over here by the six ball. A good defensive shot is to bank the six ball, leaving the cue ball near the end rail. Ideally, we would like the six ball to be used as a blocker ball. This is a nice shot in that once you have it down, it's fairly easy to execute and provides a great safety that may win you the game. In this shot, we're going to be using a super soft stroke striking the 11 ball razor thin. This sends the cue ball off the cushion ending up alongside the 11 ball.
and this shot the 8-ball is in a nice location to play a safety. We're going to be banking the 11-ball around the 6-ball using right spin on the cue ball. The right spin helps kill the cue ball's speed once it strikes the top side rail. Here is a nice defensive shot. In this shot, the one ball is fairly easy to pocket in the top left corner pocket, since the 11 ball makes the pocket play bigger. So in this case, we're gonna pocket the one ball and send the cue ball to our safe area on the bottom side rail. In this layout, we could play the combo making the three ball in the side pocket, leaving our opponent safe. The problem is that the seven ball is hanging in the corner pocket, making for a very makeable kick shot. A better option is to play the combo sending the three ball to the side rail, tying it up. The goal in this shot is to leave our opponent a long, difficult shot. Our safe area is over here by the 8 ball, so we can bank the 11 ball sending the cue ball in this direction. Before shooting shots like this, really lock in on the cue ball's path. In this layout, we could try the cut shot in the side pocket, but we still have a difficult run out since the 12 ball is in a difficult location. Instead of trying a difficult run out, a good option here is to shoot the 13 ball into the 12 freeing it from the side rail and at the same time sending the cue ball to the side rail by the 11 ball. In this shot we're going to be banking the 12 ball around the group of balls and sending the cue ball to the other end rail. The idea is to make sure we don't tie up the 12 ball when banking it. Ideally, we would like it to end up close to the corner pocket. In this shot, we could try to go all out and make the three ball in the top right corner pocket. This is a risky shot that may lose us the game if we don't make it. Now, if we look over here, we have a nice safe area that will work for leaving our opponent a tough shot. In this shot, we're going to be banking the 3 ball to the side rail toward the 5 and 11 ball. In this layout, the goal is to leave our opponent a tough bank shot. And one thing we don't want to do is break out the 6 ball. So in this shot, we're going to be striking the 11 ball thin and leaving the cue ball near the top left corner pocket. In this shot, we could try the combination in the side pocket, but it's not an easy shot, and we still have a problem ball with the five ball. A nice shot here is to play a safety by playing the two ball into the five ball and playing a stop shot, leaving the cue ball behind the one ball. In this layout, we have the disadvantage since we have fewer balls on the table. On this shot, we're going to try and land the cue ball in our safe area over here. We're going to be shooting the two ball into the nine ball. By doing this, the 2 ball will block the side pocket for the 12 ball and at the same time makes the 9 ball play tougher. In this layout, we're hooked on our last solid, the 5 ball. In situations like this, it is very unlikely that you're going to win the game, especially if you're playing a good player. Now we have to try a low percentage kick shot on the 5 ball which will probably leave our opponent an easy run out. But when you're down to one ball and your opponent still has several balls on the table, you can still make it difficult for your opponent. On this shot, instead of trying a low percentage kick shot, I'm going to tie up two of my opponent's balls 
By doing this, I've made it much harder for my opponent to run the table on their next turn. This type of strategy extends to the game, which is all you can do when faced with this situation. Here's another layout where you can try a low percentage kick shot, which may result in a loss if we don't make it. Or we can try this shot where we tie up two of our opponent's balls. This also has the added benefit that when you play this shot, it may frustrate your opponent, since now they have to work much harder to win the game. In this layout, we have a nice safe area over near the end rail. So in this shot, we're going to be striking the two ball thin with left spin. This shot takes a bit of practice, but it's definitely a shot you need in your arsenal. In this layout, we have a safe area over here. So in this shot, we're going to be striking the 15 ball thin, sending the cue ball two rails to our safe area. In this layout, we could try pocketing the three ball in the side pocket, but it's a difficult shot and we're not guaranteed a shot even if we make it. A nice option here is to stun the cue ball over to the side rail behind the 7 and 8 ball. In this layout, we're down to one ball. We don't have many good options as far as defensive shots. A good option here is to softly strike the 12 ball and send the 1 ball to the end rail. The goal is to leave the cue ball on top of the 12 ball, giving our opponent a tough shot on their 5 ball. The advantage of this shot is that now both corner pockets are available for the 12 ball. In this layout, we're at a large disadvantage in the game since we're down to one ball and it's tied up with the 8 ball. The goal in this shot is to bank the 8 ball 2 rails blocking the corner pocket while leaving the cue ball at the other end of the table. In this layout, we have an easy shot on the 5 ball but we have a problem ball with a two ball and it's going to be extremely difficult to break it out. And if my opponent gets a turn, he can use the nine ball to break out his 12 ball. So even though it's our turn at the table, right now our opponent has the advantage. So instead of trying a low percentage run out due to our problem ball, we're going to block the corner pocket and at the same time put the cue ball behind the eight ball. By doing this, we've now created two more problem balls for our opponent, the 15 and 8 ball. In this layout, Efren Reyes is shooting solids, but the 7 ball is a problem ball and there aren't any solids near this area that he can use to break it out. He could try to create an angle on one of his solids that he can use to break out the 7 ball, but it's still going to be a tall order to complete the runout. And he doesn't want to shoot the 5 ball since it's blocking a pocket for one of his opponent's balls. Instead, he's going to send the cue ball to the end rail, creating a difficult offensive shot for his opponent. And at the same time, send the 6 ball 2 rails to the other half of the table. Now he has a solid near his problem area that he can use as a breakout ball. And this leads to another principle of defense. If you have a problem ball, try to send a breakout ball near this problem area when playing safe. So in this layout, I'm going to send the cue ball to the safe area over here, and at the same time send the 7 ball around the table so it's near my problem ball. Now I can use the 7 ball to break out the 2 ball. In this shot, we have a safe area over here by the 9 ball. On this shot, we can call the 9 ball in the corner pocket and at the same time use high action to send the cue ball to the safe area. If we don't make the combination, we're still leaving our opponent safe.
The key to this defensive shot is to locate the safe area on the table, which is over here by the left end rail. So when we shoot the fireball, we're going to bank it off the side rail, sending the cue ball two rails toward this safe area. In this shot, we have a safe area over here, so when we shoot the three ball, we're going to be sending the cue ball two rails toward this area. We have to make sure we send the three ball around the ten ball, so we're not pushing the ten ball closer to the corner pocket. In this layout, our safe area is where the 14 ball is, which means all we have to do is softly bank the 14 ball off the rail leaving the cue ball in the same area. In this shot, we can see the 14 ball, but we're blocked on the 15 ball. The good news is that we can strike the cushion just to the right of the 15 ball. Since this option is available, we're going to strike the right side of the 15 ball when the cue ball comes off the cushion. This will send the cue ball toward the end rail, leaving our opponent tough. An added bonus would be the 8 ball acting as a blocker ball. In this layout, we have two low percentage shots. Our first shot is this one, where we're going to try to leave the cue ball behind the 8 ball. Since we're leaving the cue ball behind just one ball, our speed and path have to be extremely precise. The other low percentage shot is to cut the 10 ball into the corner pocket. When your defensive shot and offensive shot are both low percentage, then you're better off shooting the offensive shot since it gives you an opportunity to win the game. In this layout, we definitely don't want to break out the 4 ball freeing up their 14 ball. So in this situation, we're going to bank the cue ball off the end rail and softly strike the 7 ball against the cushion. In this layout, if we can end up around here on the end rail, we should leave our opponent a tough shot. So on this shot, we're going to be using high action and banking the four ball to the other side rail. Here's a nice shot that should help you win a few games. In this shot, we're going to strike the 7 ball thin with left spin. When the cue ball hits the end rail with the left spin, it should end up on the other side of the 7 ball. In this shot, we're going to softly send the 2 ball to the side rail, leaving our opponent a tough offensive shot. Our 11 ball is now blocking the corner pocket for the 2 ball. The key to this layout is first finding the safe area, and then deciding the best way to send the cue ball to this area. If we strike the 12 ball thin, we can send the cue ball two rails toward this area. In this layout, we could try the combination, but it may be difficult to get a good shot on the 4 ball afterward. If you're not comfortable with this combination, then a nice defensive shot here is to bank the 4 ball around the 11 ball and send the cue ball to the cushion near the 8 ball. In this layout, we could try a difficult combination, but a better option is to strike the 2 ball and send the cue ball to the side rail near the 8 ball. The goal is to use the 8 ball and 5 ball as blocker balls.
In this layout, a good safe area is around here. If we can block the side pocket. So in this shot, I'll be striking the two ball thin, sending it in front of the side pocket. The cue ball should naturally travel towards the eight ball. On this shot, we could try the bank shot on the five ball, but it's a do or die shot. A nice shot here is to just send the cue ball to this area by the side rail near the two ball. If we don't hide the cue ball, we're still leaving our opponent a tough shot. On this shot, we first need to find our safe area, which is over here on the end rail. Now we just need to determine how to send the cue ball to this location. If we strike the five ball thin with a touch of left spin, the cue ball should head to this area. In this layout, we could strike the 13 ball thin, sending the cue ball to the bottom side rail. This is a good option, but our speed would have to be very good since we could very easily give up a shot on the 5 ball. Another option is to thin the 13 ball and send the cue ball to this area along the end rail. This shot isn't as speed sensitive. In this layout, we have a few options as far as leaving our opponent a difficult shot. If we can snooker our opponent, that would be the ideal scenario, and could possibly win us the game. In this shot, if we examine the 2 and 8 ball, it looks like if we strike the 2 ball on the right side, it's going to be sent toward this area here, and the 8 ball will be sent toward the side rail. Knowing this, we'll strike the right side of the 2 ball, and send the cue ball 2 rails toward the first diamond on the end rail. On this shot, we may not hide our opponent, but just knowing where the 2 and 8 ball are going to be heading after contact means we now have a safe area to use as our target.